general relativity, step by step. I derived uh, some, some components of the stress energy tensor here. Uh, gamma, of course, is 1 over root 1 minus beta squared, where beta is your non-dimensional velocity. Uh, the way I got this was by using my fundamental equation, which I've lost. Oh, there it is. This fundamental equation here, with a particular value of my normal vector, 1, 0, 0, shoved in there. Well, now I'm going to choose a different one to give us some more components of this thing. I'm just going to apply the same trick, and hopefully I can fill in some of these question marks here. So let me write down that equation again. Okay, we've got delta P alpha equals T alpha beta, which is, of course, what we're trying to find, N beta times delta V. But now I'm going to consider my vector. Last time we had that, but now I'm going to consider... Uh, that. There are one, two, three components. I've just got an x uh, position there. So if I consider, uh, I know that n times delta oh, x equals zero, that defines my control volume. I've got zero, one, zero, zero, dot uh, delta t, delta x, delta y, and delta z equals zero. So that tells me that delta t is free, delta y is free, and delta, oops, not sure what happened there, delta z is free, but delta x equals zero. So this, this little unit vector here is giving me a different set of infinitesimals to work with. Okay, well let's see what the equation says. Well there it is. Let's see what it says. That says that delta p alpha equals t alpha, and then beta equals 1, because that's the only component that's got a non-zero component here, times delta v, which was delta t, delta y, delta z. Delta t, delta t, delta y, delta z. Now I'm going to address it in, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite it in a slightly different way. Alpha 1, delta p alpha, which is of course the form I meant in my control volume. Delta y, delta z, delta t. And this thing here, if I just draw my control volume, it's got sides delta x, delta y, and delta z. Yeah, that's right, delta x, delta y, and delta z. That area there is going to be delta y, delta z. So it's going to be 1 over the area times delta p alpha over delta t. So it's, it's, it's per unit area and per unit time. So this term here means that we've got, we're dealing with a flux, and this here means we're talking about a rate. So we've got a change of four momentum with respect to time, so it's going to equal a force. Or at least the three spatial components of it are going to equal a force. Delta P0 by delta T is equal to... It's equal to the rate of change of the zero component of the, of the momentum, for momentum, which is energy. So this equals an energy flux. Well, that's quite nice. That's quite nice. So now we can fill in some other terms of our of our um, stress uh, energy tensor here. We've already got quite a lot. We've got rho zero gamma, rho zero gamma u, rho zero gamma v, rho zero gamma w. And now I can start to fill in these components here. This one here is the flux, the energy flux. energy flux in the x direction. Why is it the x direction? It's the x direction because I chose the x component of this normal vector here. And we know what that is. We can say what the energy flux is. That's just rho zero gamma u. Well, that's great. And what are these terms here? These terms here are the forces exerted in the x direction or in the i direction. 
forces exerted in the I direction. It's the, it's the, it's the component of the, ah. <laughs> Just a minute. So I'm getting myself a bit, um, a bit tangled up here. If we just look at the spatial components, the spatial components, spatial components. That's not how you spell spatial. Spatial components. T I J. You'll remember the the the, co the, the um, convention that we use I and J for indices, spatial indices, and alpha and beta for time and space indices equals delta p i by delta a where a is normal to the j direction yeah that's right that's right so it's equal to the force it's equal to the force in the i direction Force. No, it's equal to the. It's easy to get this uh, tangled up. If the I force flux in the J direction, it's quite nice. And in general, we can generalize that. So alpha beta is the uh, alpha force flux or alpha momentum flux, I guess. in the beta direction. Okay. So in particular, T I I equals the I component of force in the I direction. And so a classical fluid fluid has T11 equals T22 equals T33 equals this thing which we call the pressure. There we go. That's quite a nice uh, that's quite a nice characterization. It's the I component of the force in the I direction equals zero for dust. Why? It's because of, of dust. Dust particles, here's my control volume, dust particles just sit there. They don't interact. If they start to bounce around, if they start to convert, uh, if they start to exchange momentum with one another, then we've got a non-zero pressure. But for a classical fluid, sorry, for dust, we've got zero pressure. But for a classical fluid, we've got some other components in the special, special, uh, special components of the stress energy tensor. So just to summarize, we've got T alpha beta equals this big, big sort of com big matrix here. This thing here is the zero, zero component, which is the energy density, energy density. These components here are energy fluxes, energy flux in the three spatial directions. These ones here, bomb, bomb, bomb are the momentum density it's because the time direction corresponds to um, a, a spatial control volume and this thing here is basically the stress tensor so it's the component of it's it's the it's it's the component of it's the component. It's the I component of for momentum in the J direction, or it's the alpha component of for momentum We're considering that this alpha here is that, and we're considering the flux of this thing in the beta direction. And this whole quantity is T alpha beta. 
Now, I've been a little bit vague. I've been trying to be quite intuitive about what's going on. And I, uh, I realise I've, I, I've, I've moved from dust to a classical fluid almost without mentioning it. But what I'm going to do now is to show you exactly the components of T alpha beta for dust and the classical fluid, and I'll do that in the next screencast. Stop now. Stop.